I recall that on Tuesday, August the 29th, 2017, I was in Edo State to commission the Boa Cement, the Obo plant in Okwela. At that time, the chairman of Boa disclosed that the Sokoto factory would be ready in 2018. And it is gratifying indeed that it is done and ready just as planned and even ahead of schedule. This commissioning is an important milestone, not only for the Boa Group, but also for the cement industry and the Nigerian economy. This plant, together with others in the country, will consolidate Nigeria's self-sufficiency in cement production and our status as a net exporter of the product. The significance, the significance of this cannot be overemphasized as we explore and implement strategies to diversify the country's earnings away from oil and gas exploitation, the investments of BOA, totaling almost US dollars in terms of US dollars, about two billion in the Edo plant, and 350 million in Sokoto, is a clear demonstration to the world that Nigeria has vast capacities and potential for profitable projects. After so many years of inadequate attention to national infrastructural development, the next few years will be defining for infrastructure development in Nigeria. The National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan estimates that an investment of three trillion US dollars is needed to bridge the infrastructure gap and increase our infrastructure assets from the current level of, of about 35% of GDP to at least 70% by 2050. To be where we ought to be in infrastructural development, investments in construction materials in particular is crucial. Cement is of course literally the building block for much of the infrastructure that we need in Nigeria today, from housing to roads to bridges to dams, etc. Currently, Nigeria produces over 40 million metric tons of cement annually, more cement than any other country in Africa. Indeed, when put together, several countries in Africa put together will still produce more cement. Nigeria's huge market size, a high urbanization rate of 3.5%, and even now, low per capita cement consumption of about 125 kg, and an estimated housing deficit of 17 million these are key drivers for the growth of the Nigerian cement industry in the medium term. We have plenty of capacity to consume cement locally. As mentioned earlier, two issues I believe will require attention. The first is the price of cement. It surely can be cheaper. I know the standard arguments, power, transportation costs, etc. But it is still a very lucrative business. And I know that it is possible that between Samad and his dear brother uh, Aliko and others, they can bring down the price of cement. The second is concrete roads. The second issue is concrete roads. We can change the narrative on road construction dramatically if we think through using concrete for road building in Nigeria. Already, a few projects have demonstrated the viability. In 2016, government commissioned the 26-kilometer Itori Beshe concrete road in Ogu State, which is currently the longest concrete road in Nigeria. The Federal Executive Council also approved the construction of the 42.5-kilometer Obajana Kaba road with cement. The Obajana road, when completed, will be the longest concrete road in Nigeria. Similarly, the two-kilometer Apapa Wharf Road, which should be completed this year, is also being rehabilitated using concrete to withstand the weight of the heavy trucks that constantly move goods back and forth from the ports to the hinterland. With our current capacity in cement production and the effective control of producers over the price, it is possible as a matter of national interest to begin a program of building our roads with concrete. 
The possibility of building cheaper and better roads is one which I'd like to throw to all of our cement producers. You can revolutionize road construction in Nigeria. You can do something for this country by simply deciding that we can build our roads with concrete and I'm sure that we can do so cheaper than current methods of building our roads. I have no doubt, I have no doubt that this newly completed factory will further boost employment generation and human capital development in Nigeria, particularly here in Sokoto State, where the Boer Group has consistently maintained its, maintained its position. And it is indeed today the second largest employer of labor after the state government. As I'm informed, the plant is projected to generate 2,000 direct and over 10,000 indirect jobs. Without a doubt, without a doubt, this is significant. And when we add to that all of the, uh, all of the corporate social responsibility work that Boa has been doing, I think that this is commendable indeed. And it's, it's exemplary and a good example for all of the companies that operate in our, within our borders in Nigeria. Without a doubt, it is the private sector, not government, that must lead the way in jobs and opportunity creation in Nigeria. The potential is so obvious. President Buhari from day one of this administration said that our primary role as government is to provide a business-friendly environment. Importantly also, that industrial and commercial policy is the joint responsibility of government and the stakeholder private sector. This is why he instituted our quarterly business forum where we meet with major stakeholders in the business and commercial community every quarter. Our industrial and competitiveness council, PEBEC also, which is our enabling, the presidential enabling business environment council, and the MSME clinics, which is our regular interaction with the private sector where we take all of our regulators around the country. We've been here in Sokoto State. In fact, Sokoto was probably the second state that we visited with all of our regulators to ensure that they're able to interact directly with the private sector. For us as federal government, working with the private sector is therefore not just a preference, it's the only way to go. And I want to just repeat that it is the commitment of Mr. President that we must, we must as a government, offer all of what is required to ensure that the private sector is able to do its business in the friendliest possible environment and that both local and international businesses are able to thrive in Nigeria and that they will be able to provide the opportunities they are providing in comfort and peace. This cement factory exemplifies the expectation of the government in the economic growth and recovery plans launched by the president in 2017. The president was explicit in that Nigeria's economic growth must be private sector led and driven. This is a Nigerian story that we are proud to propagate, the story to buy and sell Nigeria. We will produce here and we will, we will produce what we will we'll produce what we eat, we'll produce what we consume, we will sell and we will export. Let me as I close commend my dear brother Samad and his team for this bold, audacious and patriotic investment. As I was saying to the Matawale earlier, there are easier and safer ways of making money than building a plant of this massive size. And it takes an incredible, incredible level of commitment and courage to do a project on this scale. And so I commend you for this great, uh, for this great uh, investment and for the courage that you have shown in doing this. Let me also congratulate His Excellency the Governor for creating the enabling environment for a major investment such as this. Our vision. Our vision as a federal government is to ensure that every state in Nigeria can compete with any African country. And I think that we're already demonstrating that in Sokoto State, that we can compete with any country. In a few minutes, we will uh, be commissioning the, the plan. 
and I, and I very strongly believe that our country is so much better by what Boa Group has done in Sokoto State and by what they are doing across the country. Congratulations again. God bless you.